we're back from the break where our patrons got to hear what was going on there and hear one of my greatest fears. <laughs> um, but Allison, I was going to ask you to read it, but you don't have to read it. It's a recording. We I got an don't. actual call this time. I know. I love it. This one's from Scroggy Mama. I'm so excited. So I updated this. Hopefully when I push this button, <laughs> it works. Let's see. Hi, Chris. Hi, Allison. This is Scroggy Mama. When I was in middle school, it was just me and my mom and did not have a lot of money. And it was the 90s, so FUBU was very popular. And all the kids used to make fun of me because I did not have the name brand clothes. And everybody on my bus, on my street, they all had just everything FUBU. My mom surprises me because she finds this store that's supposed to sell um, this brand of clothes. And she gets me a shirt, two shirts, as a matter of fact. One was red. I remember it still. I was so excited. And I wear my shirt to school all for the class clown to start joning on me because I did not have a boo shirt. I had a poo shirt. I was so embarrassed. And to make it even better, later on, our house got broken into and someone stole my poo shirt. I'm so glad I can laugh at this now. Bye. Oh, thank you, Scrogan Bubble, oh, for that story. Yes. <laughs> I've laughed every time I've listened to that. <laughs> Who, boo? Oh, my gosh. Okay, so first off, I have to say that, number one, because she said it was middle school, right? I believe so. That is the worst time to be a child. Just people it, are mean in middle kids school. Are, kids are mean in general. I don't actually, I don't, she said it was the 90s. I don't know if she said it was middle school. I have to go back and check the tape. But anyways, anytime when you're young, it's horrible. It is, an, I don't know. I just feel like we can ask her right now. She can let us know. Was it middle school? What grade were you in? How old were you? Because I yeah. just remember kids being. Yeah, she said so middle school. Mean. I just checked check the tape. It was okay, yeah. School. That's what I thought. I remember kids being so mean. And I have a similar situation. And it's just like, even my husband, who's a middle school teacher and has been since he was, you know, graduated college, he's like, middle school children are the devil. And so he's They're evil. like. They are evil because they are like, they're not confident enough in themselves Mm -mm. to like stand up and do what's right. They have just enough insecurity to be just hateful to everyone. So I, so I do have to say that I'm so sorry that happened to you, but let's talk about it. Like, let's talk about as a parent, right? Because I don't know how many middle school kids we have listening. If so, you know, props to you because you're not on TikTok right now. But <laughs> <laughs> but let's let's talk about um, what like how a parent could respond to something like this. Yeah, and then a quick quick note here. Uh, Angie said that she couldn't hear the awkward story, so I don't know if anyone else could hear it. Um, it oh. looks like Logan might have seen it. Um, but just a quick summary, just in case you didn't catch it, the audio went out for some reason. Uh, Scraggy mom was in middle school. She wanted a FUBU shirt and her mom bought her a poo shirt <laughs> and then she was made fun of in school. So just in case you didn't catch that. I mean, that F and that P is just, I mean, it's just so <laughs> close. It's just that one connecting piece that <laughs> turns it into a P. One line away from being the right thing. <laughs> one line away. But I mean, this is actually a really good thing to talk about if you think about it, because if you have children or if you have a niece, or a nephew or anyone that's a, you know, in a certain age range as a child that you care about, they're going to encounter things like this. And, and a lot of it, a lot of this can actually come from money, from people not having the right things or not having, you know, they're comparing themselves and then they get made fun of. Did that yeah. ever happen to you, Chris? Oh yeah. I don't know if, I feel like every kid has had this happen at some point, but I yeah. for sure did. Cause like I didn't have super name brand stuff but i had to you know every now and then i'd have something nice like I, like I was looking at logan's comment here he said that uh let me bring it up here he said that uh he said i love fubu back in the day especially the fat albert line having that on your pants was like a badge of honor and it was that was that was a badge of bougie <laughs> i had like fubu was huge when we were in high school i think we were like the tail end of it for us where yeah you and like, i yeah but like, I remember it. By the time we were graduating, no one really was wearing FUBU anymore, but mm-hmm. it was like the earlier years. And I remember I had this these gigantic pants, these huge yep. pants that had Fat Albert like cartoons all around yep. the, the pants leg. And it was like a big deal. You felt special if you had those pants and you're walking around school. Is it like if you have, you had Jordans? Kind of like 
not as prestigious. I don't think as prestigious no. as Jordan's, but well, it was no, up there. But I mean, it it meant something. It meant you had someone gave you enough money to go buy <laughs> to go buy mm-hmm. these pants. But yeah. it, it's hard though because like you're as a kid trying to impress these other kids who none of you have jobs, none of you have money. Yeah. Uh, but you're sitting there comparing what each other are showing up wearing, and it can be hard, especially. I remember, you know, there were times where I didn't have like the nicer clothes or I remember kids who just had like, you know, just whatever clothes their parents could afford for them to have. And people just get viciously made fun of as if, you know, it was like they were just getting attacked. It was horrible. Some of the stuff Mm -hmm. I saw people say to other kids on campus. Yeah, it's super fun. Scroggy mom just said my daughter is in middle school and I hate it for her. My son's going to middle school next year and I'm terrified. Like I'm just flat out terrified. You know, when I was in middle school, there was a time whenever like. And I tell my mom, my mom about this. My mom is probably gonna feel terrible about this, but it was going into sixth grade, so going into middle school. And I don't know if we just didn't have a lot of money, or if really it was like the paydays weren't lining up. But we didn't go back to school clothes shopping. But when you are, you know, which is fine most of the time. But I had grown, and all of my pants were like high waters. Mm. and that's what I wanted to wear was pants. So I don't know why it was like 115 degrees outside. <laughs> and that's probably what people were wearing. Oh, Doc Martens. Oh, we, I never had Doc Martens. I had knockoff Doc Martens. Sorry, I got distracted. So anyway, <laughs> anyway, all of that to say that I didn't have, I had one pair of pants that fit me in sixth grade when mm. I started middle school. And they were overalls. So like on Monday, I wore them as overalls. On Tuesday, I wore them as pants and I put like a shirt over the overalls. On Wednesday, I wore them this that way again. On Thursday, I wore them as overalls. And like by the fourth day, some kid was like, don't you have any other pants? Oh no. And I'm like, no, <laughs> no, I don't. I would have worn them if I had them. That, yes, like, do you think I'm doing this on purpose? Like. Do you think I want this? And I remember I had a Tweety Bird shirt and I wore that the first day of sixth grade and some people made fun of me because they were like, oh, that's so childish. And I'm like, I don't have anything else, guys. This is what I have. And that's the thing. Like, it's all about confidence, too, because someone Mm -hmm. could come in with that same shirt and then be like the Mm -hmm. most popular person. Yep. Because they are just going to be, you know, they're at the top of the social ranks and, Mm -hmm. you know, no one's going to say anything to them. Yeah, I was not at the top of the social ranks. <laughs> I, know. I know that's probably a surprise to you, I but am I was shocked. shocked. But all of that to say, how do you think? Because I'm thinking, I immediately think about this as a parent, right? Because I really don't think that any middle school kids are listening to us right now. Or I even highly doubt kids. that. I mean, well, maybe Scraggy um, Mama's daughter is listening. She is. Shout out to her. Um, but I will say that how do you approach this as a parent? Because when I went mm. to my mom, she immediately was like, let's go buy you clothes. Right. Like I came to her crying. And I think, though, and I actually talk about this in my book, Chris, is as a child and when you're in middle school, this is you are a child still. Oh, yeah. Your perception is your reality. So Mm. my perception was that we were poor and had no money and couldn't afford new clothes, which became my reality. So years and years and years later, when my mom's like, we weren't like poor. I'm like, what? Because that was my perception and it was my reality. And it was no longer my reality until I was an adult. And my mom told me it wasn't my reality and explained it to me. So how do we help children that are anywhere between, you know, late elementary all the way up through high school navigate that perception when kids are mean and when it has to do with money? Mm. because no matter where you live there's always going to be someone with more money than you always no matter what look i know i know i have decades of parenting experience but i want you to go as an as a newer parent than me i want you to go first on this one okay so here's what i i don't even i've i don't even know what i would do because i'm still trying to figure this out kind of winging this parent thing but you know what my mom did is I remember being really upset. I was maybe in middle school or late elementary, and I was upset one Christmas because I knew the truth about Christmas. I'll just leave it there. Yeah, please so don't ruin I, it for other children, Allison. Yeah, I knew the truth. And he's like, I'm not going to go into this, but <laughs> I did. I knew the truth about Christmas. And I remember being, and I, I have seen my own children 
have this, my oldest one had this conversation with me or question this is why does someone else getting a bigger and better and more expensive gift than I am? Right? Mm. Like, why is that happening? And I remember asking my mom that I remember being really upset one year being like, wait a minute, I got this, but then they got all of that. How, why, why that's not fair. And my mom said, Allison, we are like, they might have gotten that and you got this, but we are saving to try our best to help put you through college. But not every family does that. Mm. And I mean, you know, I still graduated student loans, but they helped what they could. They saved what they it's could. It's better than it could have been. Yeah. So I don't know. I don't even honestly remember how much my parents gave me, but maybe it was $5,000. Maybe it was $10,000. I don't remember. I'd have to ask my mom, but I will say that 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 made me think differently when I was that age and think like, okay, mm -hmm. my parents are saving for other things. So when my son has said something like, well, why do they get like, I have people, I'm just going to say it. I have people in my area where they budget a thousand dollars per kid for Christmas. A thousand dollars? What are they getting? Dollars. Cars? Small, small little cars. Well, you don't want to know that how much cars cost these days. <laughs> as so I this said that, I was like, cars? I was like, that's, the I, that's the best thing I can think of that costs a thousand dollars. Yeah, it's that like five hundred, a thousand, like more. But it's like it. It all depends on where you live, and where I live is a pretty affluent neighborhood for this. Like we live in the lower section of a of an affluent neighborhood. And I'm sorry, like, I just don't want to give my kids that much stuff. And so I have to tell my son who's not getting these same level of gifts, especially when they get older and they're wanting technology. I have to tell him, look, I know that you want this. However, mom and dad, and we, we've told our son, listen, we are saving for um, retirement. So that way you don't have to take care of us when we're older. We are saving for college so that way we can try to help pay for some of your college and we are saving for vacations so that way we can take trips together. So we can't do all of those things and spend all these money on toys and gifts and things like that. Like we're prioritizing. So we've talked about that with my oldest son. I think you have to. And I even, um, mm -hmm. Scroggy Mama is in here. I think the comparison envy starts so early, especially around Christmas and comparing what they got. It, it's, mm -hmm. it, it's natural. And it, even you think about it, even as adults, we do this, like this leaves out of childhood and into adulthood mm -hmm. where people still oh, yeah. say things about people about what they wear, about the cars they drive, about mm -hmm. maybe their house or, or what vacation they can and cannot take. Like this doesn't just like start and end in school people continue yeah. these habits all the way through. And I think it, it could be hard because y you can't really, you can't really reason with the people who make those comments. Well, hard. no, because they don't know because that's not their reality. Right? Like ha where are you, how is that person going to have any empathy? Yeah, no, it's all about who has what, like, yeah, if you, this is what you need to have to show you're successful. Mm -hmm. And if you're not showing that to everyone, then you must be broke or poor or, mm -hmm. you know, exactly. there's something wrong with you. It's, it's a, it's a very much a judgment call that, mm -hmm. that people make. And it's the same energy from middle school that yeah. a lot of people bring into adulthood and, and, you know, us as adults still have to deal with that type of stuff. Yeah. I don't really feel like I deal with it, but I think that when you become adults, you become more confident in who you are. I think that when you're the more confident in who you are as a person, the less you'll struggle with that. So I don't feel like people like say things like that to me. Well, or I, I don't the, know who you're surrounding yourself well, with. I don't really, but no but, one's <laughs> saying me things like that to me except for you behind yeah, my back. Like, oh, but was, we'll address that another day. <laughs> Those same headphones again that aren't plugged into your computer. <laughs> uh, well, I think the difference is like as an adult, you can choose who you want to be around. That's but when true. you're a kid, you're forced to still be around That's these people, true. even if they yeah. treat you poorly. You have no choice but to come back to school the next day, which well, is really I mean, hard. Some people, though, like in their jobs. Well, yeah, you can get stuck around some jerks. I've, <laughs> I've worked with some people that I wish I didn't have to work with, but uh, yeah, no, Allison, you're not but... talking about me, are you? <laughs> <laughs> this is optional. <laughs> but no, it, it, it's it's hard. I think I've never had to have these conversations. That, that's to me is like a very difficult mm -hmm. one to because you're kind of explaining to a kid that people are going to judge you. 
mm-hmm. and you can't really do anything to it. Like the, the the answer is, you know, you have to just try to ignore it and keep, you know, focus on yourself. But that's really yeah. hard to do. That is really hard. It is to do. really hard to do. And I remember, I remember growing up, Abercrombie and Fitch was like really popular. And my mom gave us starting in, I want to say it was like seventh grade. She gave us our back to school clothes budget, and it was a hundred dollars. You got a hundred dollars to buy all your back to school clothes, <laughs> shoes, yeah. clothes, everything, which by the way, it wasn't the pink tax was not widely known. So <laughs> I should have gotten more than my brother. You should so have. I'm just going to throw that out there. Maybe I'll ask my mom for some reimbursements. Like but, this, like a last week's episode when we talked about the, the cell phone reimbursement. We need to have. Oh, yeah, you know, exactly. Like, mom, actually, um, I was being underfunded for my clothing yes. budget. I'm going to do some reconciliation and get back to you. <laughs> So anyway, I remember being in the mall. You remember that malls? The malls. I remember being in the mall. My mom was like, okay, you guys go. I'm going to, or like my mom walked around with me. I don't know. My brother went off somewhere. And I remember my brother saying, you're not going to wear I an Abercrombie and Fitch shirt. <laughs> and I was like, I can't afford it. I have a hundred dollars and I need to be out by a whole wardrobe. Like what do you mean? Like, a, wait, how much I, are those shirts? I've never bought a single oh, item of clothing. From I that remember store. I was like in seventh or eighth grade. I bought one Abercrombie and Fitch shirt. It was made of like cheesecloth. It was so thin. <laughs> made of cheesecloth. And it cost me forty three dollars. And what year was this? I was probably like thirteen or twelve. Thirteen. Yes, that is it was like crazy. it was forty. It was a long sleeve Abercrombie shirt, and I remember thinking, like I remember feeling he the way you know how older brothers can do this. Well, you don't know because you're the one who does this to your <laughs> younger brother. Put them in is place. they make you feel so like embarrassed? Like I felt so embarrassed that I wasn't wearing yeah. Abercrombie. The thing is, though, is like. I, I, I don't know. And so I bought that. And my mom was like, okay, is that really what you want? And I was like, well, I guess. Like, I don't, I don't want to be the kid that doesn't have it. So I had one Abercrombie shirt. And you had $57 left to pay for the rest yeah, of it. Yeah, basically. <laughs> yeah. So I probably got like, and we're going to like Marshalls. <laughs> like, let me look for the jeans that are ripped, <laughs> sent to Marshalls and Ross. But it was, it's hard because, you know, that's when you're at the age where other people's opinions just matter. It matters so much. Mm-hmm. I, have, I have almost the exact same question or situation going on where I, I remember my senior year was like when I don't know if I got to do it before that, but I remember specifically my senior year, I could drive and my mom gave me the money. I think it was probably like a hundred dollars. So it's very yeah. similar to go buy some new clothes for the school year. And I was like, okay, mm-hmm. so I went to the mall and there was a, you know, the, the, the favorite place I, I didn't get a Cinnabon or anything like that back then. I just was right to the clothing store and there was a store called up against the wall. And okay. it was this, it was this like clothing store that like all the, you know, the, the cool people went to. So I was like, I'm gonna go in here and get my oh, clothes. Oh, so you there. didn't belong there. I didn't belong there whatsoever. I had no business <laughs> walking in that store with a hundred dollars, let alone. And so I go in there and Allison, I walk out with one shirt and one pair of pants. And that was the entire hundred dollars oh <laughs> was gosh. gone. And I was like, oh no. I have no, I have no other new clothes. This is it. It's right. It's like, but it's such a learning experience too. It is. It's like, it, it really is. Okay. We have some chats in the discord we need to deal with. We need to talk about this. All right. What's in there? So first off, um, Angie wants to know if I saw the Abercrombie documentary. There's a yes, documentary? Yes, I did. It is fascinating. It's what happens? On, um, so they talk, it's called the, the rise and fall. I think it's like. Or maybe that's not the name of it. I don't know. But it's like the rise and fall of Abercrombie and Fitch. But it it's like kind of depressing. It goes on about how like they essentially were, they had like a book of like, who are, here's the people that you have to hire. And they basically all had to be like thin, white, blonde, like it was, uh, so yeah. they were, it was like very racist and it was all about like how it was, um, you know, just very cheap stuff. Yes, white hot, the white rise and fall of Africa. Africa. It is fascinating. But then it talks about how like, and it has like old Abercrombie and Fitch managers that like, like black managers that were like, here's why I left and here's what happened. And so it's really sad, but I think it's very like powerful that it's out. But then they tried to pivot 
right? And so now they are still, you know, I, I don't know. I, don't, I mean, I don't go to a mall anymore, but I'm no, guessing they're, they're still in malls. Places. I do not go to yeah, malls anymore. Yeah, no. Um, but I, it's very fascinating because now they're trying to be this like very like inclusive, like free brand, mm. but it's super interesting to see how much damage they did to themselves. And how much damage the owner and the CEO did. And then now how they're trying to turn it around and how they like have brought in like good people to really mm. try to change it and like course correct, if you will. Yeah, I remember my brother actually worked at Amber Grombie in high school and he was yeah. one of the few black people that got to work yeah. on the floor. Like he was like all the other black people had to work in the back. Yes. That's and, one of the things they said. It's like you had if you were black, you had oh, to yeah. work in the back. You were on the front. And he, I remember he said he was in class or something. And he's told his teacher, like, oh, yeah, I work at Amber Comby. And he's like, oh, let me guess, you work in the back. <laughs> and he was like, because no. Was no I, I, he said, I can, no, I work on the floor. And he's like, no, you don't. I don't believe you. Because there were no black people in the store when you go there working. Never. Yeah. Was, I mean, there there, were, there weren't. It's really, and everyone had to be beautiful. Yeah. They weren't like, and if you weren't, mm -mm. You, you got put in the back or you didn't get the job. Like, it was it's, a weird place. A very weird place. It's crazy. Yeah. It's crazy. Um. Yeah, it says that they had pretty people on staff that only worked when there was a store visit. So they would bring wow. in, yes. Yeah, so whenever like someone would come visit the store from higher up, they would put, put only the pretty people on. But all of that to say is, I think that it's such it's stores like this, right? It's examples like that of why of of how society can even be encouraging this. I don't know, this desire for people to compare and to get on to each other about their clothing choices. Now, I I'm very, like, hopeful, and I think that, like, oh, well, now we live in a day and age where, like, people are less like that, I hope. But I, I don't know because so. I'm not a kid. Yeah, exactly. I, I don't know what it's like right now. I mean, here's the thing. Now <laughs> – Well, you, you never leave your home. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, I haven't been outside in three years. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. I, honestly, I don't think there was one. I think it was last week. I realized after on day three that I had not left my apartment in three days. I hadn't even and gone outside. Like, and I was like, <laughs> what? What's happened? I was like, maybe I should just go step outside and look out the window or something. Like, I don't know. Fresh air or just sunlight. I guess, I guess. Overrated if you ask me. But, but yeah, okay. well, I was going to say, though, now kids you don't have to only worry about bullying when you're on campus. Like it, it, it's gone digital now. It's all on the internet. Like people are just bullying you mm -hmm. nonstop. So it's a, it's, I don't know. I feel for kids who are in school right now. I know. It's, it has to I'm be terrified. Hard. I'm like, not going to lie. I am terrified about them going through school, but you do your best. And then when you, you fail, you put them in therapy and, <laughs> <laughs> oh. and you pray. <laughs> I want to know though, before we wrap up, how, have you ever dealt with like fake or knockoff clothes in school? Have you ever had that? When I was a kid? Yeah. Like, did you ever have like off brand or? Oh like, yeah, I did. Did kids make fun of you? Did you ever get that? Or did they just um, not pay attention? They were just like, eh. I'm trying to think if they did. I don't, I don't remember anything like blaringly obvious. I remember, I don't remember anything blaringly. I remember when I was like in middle school, I went shopping at Old Navy and I felt so cool. <laughs> I felt so cool. You like all the commercials? And then I remember showing up. I remember I got this long khaki skirt and this white top from Old Navy. It was seventh grade and I showed up to school and there was like a teacher wearing the same thing. <laughs> and I was like, nope, we missed the mark on this one. I've gone a little bit too far here. We missed <laughs> The mark. <laughs> so, like, I remember that and being made fun of for that, but never like super knockoff. But also, I think it depends on where you live. So, mm. I grew up. I grew up in a school that, like, you know, my parents. We were like straight middle class, but like, I grew up in a school where there was a lot of poverty. Mm. This was like high school. My high school, there was a lot of poverty or lower middle class, like really low, low middle class or po just truly poverty. And what was always crazy to me was realizing like, okay, a lot of these kids that lived in poverty are the kids that had the name brand clothes. 
And when I went to college, I read this book as in one of my teaching classes, and it was by Ruby Payne. And it was all about poverty. And it was talking about how people in poverty have that because that is a symbol of money. So they don't see like investments and savings and all of that as a symbol of money and status. It is their shoes and their clothes. And mm. that is the symbol of money and status. So I remember being in high school being so confused because I had a friend who literally had a, a little like really tiny house and did not have a door. She had a sheet as her front door. Yes. The this front the, door? The front door was a sheet tacked on, but she had all name brand clothes. So it was very, so for wow. me growing up, I was so confused, but it's because it was, that was that status symbol mm. that showed, okay, we are doing well. So whenever, you know, her parents would get a paycheck or something, they would spend it on clothes because that's how they presented themselves to the world. Mm. Yeah. 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 I even so, did, yeah. I recently was talking to a friend and he was like, where he lives in this apartment building, he's like, literally, the car next to him is a Bentley. He mm. said, there's a Bentley. He said, there's, in this apartment complex, there's all these luxury cars. And he's like, yeah, what are you all doing? He's like, I, he's like, I know we're, yeah. we all live in the same place. <laughs> he's like, so I know, <laughs> I know what's going on here. And he was just like, you know, it's, it's, it's just for the show. He's just to yeah. look presentable, look wealthy, look successful to the people around you. Yes. Yeah. And so, I don't know. So maybe that's why, like you had asked in high school, if I ever dealt with that in high school, I was asking those types of questions. Like what the heck is going on? Mm. Like, I'm so confused. And that's whenever I, you know, cause I was in all different friends groups. I mean, you know, I was Gothic at one point. Hold on. And wait, do I know this? You didn't know that. Let's not brush past this. Did I, I don't think I knew that you were goth. You were a goth kid at some point. You didn't know I was a goth kid. Are there pictures of this, Allison? I do have pictures. I'm going to have to ask my mom. I had spikes. I would wear spikes, oh my. spikes around my neck. And I remember one time I got pulled in by the principal and he was like, you can't wear that necklace. And I'm like, show me in the co student code of conduct. He's like, you just can't wear that necklace. They had long spikes. I dressed up. I had, I would wear all black eye makeup. I never wore black lipstick, but I wore all black. I had the studs. I had the spikes. I, I cannot believe this. As, are you uh, serious? As upbeat and bubbly as you are that you were a goth kid, I would pay money if there was footage of this just to see. I am so sad that you would just assume that all goth kids are not happy. I'm not saying that goth kids are not happy people. I'm saying that you <laughs> do not seem like you were a goth kid. Well, I was. I was a goth. <laughs> Kid. I and I was I went from like a skater punk phase straight to like goth so I had like a skateboard wow. I was doing ollie like I like I had all of that I would like draw my shoes and then I just went to kind of more goth where everything was black I mean I would wear blue jeans but then you can't be goth and wear blue jeans what are you doing I mean I would wear like <laughs> black shoes black I never was like super sad goth I was never like when I think of like a goth kid sometimes I think of like the boy with like his hair like straight, yeah, straight it's like, down and he had the eyeliner coming down. That's what I'm like, thinking of. No, but I, did I have black eyeliner on like all black, all black and then black eyeshadow and I wore all black and I oh. wore the spikes and I wore the I need to see belt, pictures of and this, I wore Allison. the spikes around my wrist and I like, yeah, I mean, I, I listened to like, you know, yeah, what do goth kids just, listen to? I don't. I didn't have any um, goth friends. I mean, I up. listened to a lot of like insane clown posse. <laughs> <laughs> aren't you? Called, aren't, aren't you what a juggalo? Right? Are those the insane clown posse <laughs> like, people? I would be like uh, ICP. That's insane clown posse. I would. Um, I would be. I would listen to like Metallica. I listened to. I listened to a lot of like. Corn. I would listen to. I did know. You, did you go to mosh pits? Were you never ever in a I mosh pit? I have been in mosh pits before. I have been crowd surfing before. Uh, yeah. I like. Allison, I am. I did the damn thing. I, I am shocked. I, I am. am not, I cannot believe you didn't shocked. know this. I am shocked. I cannot believe How this. How did you not know this? How I, long have we known <laughs> each other? Do you even know who I am? <laughs> and she said, why do I feel like her black eyeliner would have rainbow sprinkles? <laughs> That's 
just my personality. I was still very bubbly. So I was this goth kid, but I was very nice. I was very happy and nice. And this is like totally taking a turn, by the way. But it has gone off the rails. I would smile. You know this about me. I smile when I'm nervous. Yes. So you have this like goth kid walking down the halls of high school. I'm freaking nervous. So I'm just smiling. <laughs> like People were probably scared of you. <laughs> That's why it was going on. But no, that was that was me. I am shocked. I can't I believe you shocked. didn't know this. I, have no words I really for this. wanted to go at like I remember being like ninth grade. I grew out of the phase. I mean, it was only for like two <laughs> two or three years. Two or three years? I, That's a long time. I remember going um wanting to like I remember thinking I was not old enough to go to prom when I was in this phase of my life. So I was not at like a I was not a off, I was not a junior or senior. Maybe I was, I know it started in eighth grade and it ninth grade was, it was my, I was full fledged off in deep. ninth grade. Yes. I was, I was committed, but I remember going into hot topic. Oh, I would even buy like, like makeup that was like, would make me like translucent, like try to make me like I was in it, like a ghost. I so that way the black eye makeup photos. would pop more. I need photos, Allison. But I remember, I remember seeing this dress in um, Hot Topic, and it's what you would think of like as like probably a Halloween costume now. Hot Topic it was, was like, like the the goth store at first. That was, I, I, was my favorite store, <laughs> so I shopped. That's where I did my back to school shopping at that age. <laughs> okay, hold on, hold on. I gotta pause really quick and read this comment from Angie. She said, "Was goth before or after the taquito party? <laughs> Maybe after, <laughs> hence the sadness." It was after the taquito party. It, that Thank was a turning point. Much. That was the turning point. Thank you very much. Yes. So they just put this picture in. That's very oh. much like. Oh, let me put this what on the I, screen. Yeah, I wanted a nose ring, but my mom said no. I wanted a tongue ring so bad. I wanted it to pierce my tongue so bad. My mom was like, no, you're not doing that over my dead body. It's <laughs> not happening. But that was, oh, I remember like, I, it was, it was, I don't need to get into all of this. I don't need to incriminate myself in some of these things. Please but keep going. No. All of that to say, I remember going to Hot Topic and we're seeing this dress and I remember thinking, I want to wear that to prom when I go to prom in high school. Because you realize I went to a high school that was so I just say it was a bad high school that we couldn't have any other dances because then ev there would be all these fights and games. You just get the one. Stuff. You get the one dance. You get one dance when you're a junior. You get one dance when you're a senior. There's no homecoming dance. There's no dance where the girls ask the – no. Those were, we could not be trusted oh, where I grew up. Or people couldn't afford them. But I remember seeing this dress, and it was like this medieval black – like, like it looked like like a medieval times lace and all this stuff, like this bodice. And I was like, that's what I want to wear to prom. And I thought it was just the coolest thing. What are you doing? Are you pulling I'm it up? I'm going to see if I could find one. Okay. <laughs> I found, here, okay, you just tell me any of these dresses, <laughs> are any of these what you're talking about? Um, The okay. one at the, yes. <laughs> Let me see. It was probably like that, maybe like to go down. To the left. No, oh, whoa, too far. To Over the left. Here. No, like to this? the right. To the right. To the right. To the right. Maybe that one. Maybe. Okay. So something like this is what you're. No, doing. that's no. not it. No. Too fancy. No. No, that's too fancy. That's but, too normal. But some black. Dress. It was not normal. <laughs> it was like what you would see them wearing in like Hocus Pocus. Okay. It, okay. I know exactly what you're talking about there. Like, not normal. But no. And now I get to wear shirts that say good vibes. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you've made a complete turnaround. Angie was like, I thought, <laughs> she said, feel like she wanted to be on the left, but we all know she's the one on the right. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. I am so, blown away. This show, we've completely gone off the rails. I guess this is our Thanksgiving episode, so here, it's going to be longer for you, but this, yeah. I, will, I am sh sh shocked. This is my gift to you, Chris. For Christmas, all I want is a picture. I would just, you don't have to, I don't want to pretty just text me a picture of you and your goth years. That's all I need. That, that's I don't the know best if I have a gotten. lot because then, well, because then I left my friends because they were all doing drugs and they kind <laughs> of like pushed me out and I had to find new friends and because I didn't want to do the drugs with them. And so I was kind of pushed aside. And so what I did was I like burned all my pictures. Because uh, I was like, start of a phase. new life. Yes, right? Like super dramatic. 
as teenagers so I don't are. know. But I know my mom has some. Um, I just don't. I mean, you know, the quality is not great. Yeah, and so really I know great. she has like one that she is like a picture of a picture um, that I can try to get her to send me. Oh, man, this was amazing. Thank you so much for sharing this. You're welcome. It's the greatest gift. You know what? This is very loud motorcycle drives by. Uh, any closing words, Allison, before <laughs> I think we I think we probably should move on. But yeah, since we've words? been recording for a really long time. All I just want to say is that. When you're dealing with comparison, especially when your children are going through it and it has to do with, you know, comparison that really is initiated with money, I think just trying your best as a parent, what I would say is try your best to number one, approach it with empathy, Mm -hmm. right? Kids, like their perception is their reality. Help them reframe their perception to closer align with reality offer empathy and then tell them what your priorities are and why maybe you're not spending money on these name brand clothes or these toys or these things. And then also remember that like, it's okay for them to feel jealous. It's okay for them to be sad, but then just being willing to be a listening ear along the way. I love it. I love it. Spoken like a true goth. Spoken like a God, getting to the heart of the matter, get to the real truth here. You know, <laughs> Scroggy Mama, thank you so much for sending in that story. Not only because it was just a great story, but also it led to us learning about Allison's goth phase. I can't believe you didn't know that. I will, I can never repay you for that. <laughs> if you all want to be amazing like Scroggy Mama and help us unlock more Allison stories, send in your oh, stories. No, to us. please do. We want you to send the stories in so that we can talk about you and your situation. I mean, yes, but if as a byproduct we get more stories like this, I'm all for it. Please, please do. Send, send me in. <laughs> okay, oh. well, you can do that by calling 707-200-8259. Oh, yeah. Or if you want to make it super easy, just go to awkwardpodcast.com where you can leave us a voicemail or you can leave us a message if you don't want to talk on the phone.